Hey everyone, I want to make a quick video explaining something that's somewhat nuanced, but important when it comes to understanding retirement income planning. That's the difference between solving for a gross and solving for a net income when determining a sustainable spending level. And the reason this matters so much is that sometimes, and particularly when using a risk-based guardrails approach that I'm a big fan of, solving for a gross income can lead to some weird and counterintuitive results when it comes to your net take-home pay. You might even think the software you're using has to be making some sort of mistake. But in this video, we'll walk through how this issue can come up and some things you might want to do to avoid it. I think it's easiest to illustrate this issue by giving an example. So let's give an example of how you might see some of these weird results by thinking about building out a plan in Income Lab. Let's say somebody does that, they solve for their initial spending, and they see, let's say, $10,000 in net after-tax income, and then they go to make a change to their plan that they think will likely increase their spending capacity but instead they actually see their net income go down. So let's say in this example, someone was going to retire in January, but decided to work for six more months and retire in July instead. Now, logically, we easily understand that this means they should have more spending capacity in retirement. They're compressing the retirement period or how long they'll actually need to take distributions. And they're bringing in more income, presumably more savings. And this should raise their spending capacity in retirement. But maybe someone makes this change in a program like Income Lab and sees their net income falls from $10,000 a month to $9,500 a month. I've been there looking at the software and the output and thinking, what in the world is going on, right? Something has to be wrong. The issue here is actually the difference between gross versus net income. Gross is going up, but net is going down simultaneously because now we have six months worth of extra income in the plan, and that pushes the otherwise higher gross income at the start of retirement into a higher tax bracket and that leaves us less net income left overall. Usually software, or at least a tool like Income Lab, is reporting net income in the first month of retirement. So we end up getting this sort of short-term distortion in what someone's net spending capacity actually is. Now, let's take a step back here and acknowledge that as financial planners planning for clients and as retirees planning for retirement themselves, what we're usually caring about is our net spending. How much can we actually take home at the end of the day? However, when we think about the math of retirement planning, what really matters is gross spending. Gross spending is going to dictate what can be taken from a portfolio in any given year. We might sum this up by saying sustainable withdrawals don't care about your taxes. Retiree A may live in a place where it's going to tax their retirement income at a very high rate. And retiree B may live in a place that's going to tax their income at a very low rate. But at the end of the day, both of these individuals can only take the same gross amount and it really doesn't matter what their taxes are for purposes of determining what that sustainable gross spending level is. Let's quickly look at an actual example. Let's say we have two retirees, John and Michael, and they each have a million dollar portfolio that's entirely in a traditional IRA. Now, because this is in a traditional IRA, everything is going to be subject to ordinary income tax. Let's say that between state, federal, and local taxes, John is paying a rate of 40% on his distributions while Michael is paying a rate of 10% on his distributions. Now, if they each take $40,000 out of their portfolio, that's putting the same gross strain on the portfolio. Each portfolio is going from a million dollars to 960,000. But the reality is that they're keeping different amounts of their gross distributions. John is going to only keep 60% or 24,000, whereas Michael is going to be able to keep 90% or 36,000. If we were to only report their net monthly spending, John can spend $2,000 a month net whereas Michael can spend $3,000 a month net, despite the fact that they're both taking out the same gross $40,000 from their IRA. But the key point here is that when it comes to planning for distributions, it doesn't matter that they have different tax rates. It doesn't matter that John is having his tax at a higher rate, at least when it comes to figuring out how much they can sustainably take from their portfolios. As I said before, sustainable withdrawals don't care about your taxes. Going back to the confusing results this can create, it's worth addressing why software like Income Lab is actually solving for a spending level that is generally going to smooth out gross spending rather than net spending. One of the things that's so powerful about Income Lab, at least compared to other guardrails frameworks that are generally driven by withdrawal rates, is that Income Lab can look at all of someone's retirement income and set a spending level based on total risk rather than focusing on something like 5% distributions from a portfolio. This is important because often when someone retires early, delays social security, or has a pension that starts at some point in the future, they have a spending pattern that follows a shape that Justin Fitzpatrick and I have called the retirement distribution hatchet. Distribution rates are often higher in the earlier years of retirement, 
but then decline once social security and other income sources kick in. But if we're going to use a software tool and say, show me how much I can spend at a given level of risk, that calculation is going to solve for how high can we set that overall smoothed out spending level without risk of going above whatever risk threshold we've set. But it's going to do that with a gross income because, well, sustainable withdrawals don't care about your taxes. If we're trying to solve for a net income that results in a certain level of risk, this would be so computationally demanding that it would be highly impractical, at least until supercomputers get here. It would take way too long to get results and people would be frustrated by how slow it is to solve for net income instead of gross. But this is actually really an important detail to understand because advisors or retirees often run into this type of problem and think the software has to be broken. I think if you look at Income Lab's history of paying a lot of attention to communication and how results are interpreted, it's something we'll definitely continue to think about and see if there might be ways to improve upon this. But there are several scenarios that can trigger these weird gross versus net issues. Some other scenarios include adding a new income stream, like a pension in retirement, or having some really large expenses that might be requiring large IRA distributions that are bumping an individual into a higher tax bracket. I actually had just this case for a client not too long ago. He had some one-time spending of about $500,000 right at the front end of retirement. And this was bumping him up into a higher tax bracket and really dragging down that net income available off of the otherwise smoothed out gross spending level it was sustainable for the remainder of his plan. So from a practical perspective, what can we do about this? I think there are a few things to consider from a plan design perspective. First, you may want to think about the timing when you're modeling retirement. Even if someone plans to retire in October, modeling retirement at the beginning of the year without any employment income will likely give you a truer sort of picture of what that long-term spending at a sustainable level might look like because we're not pulling in a partial year's worth of employment income that could be influencing the tax rates they're more likely to see long-term. A second consideration is to be mindful of some very large expenses and how you might handle those. In the case I was mentioning before, the solution I ultimately found to be the best was to actually take those expenses out of the plan separately. I did my own calculation of what it would take to pull that large expense and actually a couple others out as well and moved them to the front end and basically pre-fund that portion of the plan and then move forward with the calculation of the income without those assets in the plan. Of course, this does distort the first-year tax situation a little bit, but in this case, we weren't running a plan to solve for first-year taxes. We were really looking for that long-term spending level that's sustainable. So building it out the way I did was a better solution. Another option is to use the solve for income functionality, at least within a program like Income Lab. So you could tell Income Lab in the advanced settings that you actually want to solve for a certain amount of income. Of course, this is very different than solving for a certain level of risk, and you have to be comfortable knowing that the spending level is not at an excessive level of risk. But computationally, it's not intractable to solve for a predefined net income level. If I'm running into an issue like this, I might first build out a plan, a sort of simplified structure like I described before, and at least solve for that reasonable spending level at some level of risk I'm comfortable with. And then I can go back in and solve for a defined net spending level with all those other complexities still in the plan. In fact, for more complex plans, this sort of two-step process is probably what I would recommend to get the best results, and it'll give you more net income stability going forward in the plan in case there are other factors that might impact tax rates from one year to the next. So I hope you found that helpful. I hope that helps shed some light on why sustainable distributions in retirement are really a gross issue and not a net issue. And if you are using a tool like Income Lab, how you can make sense of and hopefully avoid some of the issues that come up because of this. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Have you run into this issue before? Any solutions that you have? Let me know what's worked for you. And as always, like, subscribe, and I'll talk to you guys soon.